Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Michelle Grimolia, the president and CEO here at Woodland Pond. I'm sorry for the delay. Jason and I were just chatting about a couple of things before I got started. So today is Tuesday, January 25th, 2022, and this is my weekly update for a Tuesday. I actually don't really have a lot to say today. I, uh, you know, got a lot out in my memo yesterday. Hopefully you all saw that via email. Um, I would like to encourage, you know, all of you again to consider, please, uh, if you live in independent living and you have a mail copy and you don't need to get paper copies of things, please contact concierge and ask them to put a green dot on your mailbox, your cubby box. Um, we have just far too much paper going out. I was shocked to see still how many paper copies are going. So if you do get things via email, hopefully that's adequate. Um, we can save a lot of paper by not printing for people that don't need it. So if, you, if you're okay with it, you can certainly ask for a green dot. And I don't see any reason why we can't do the same thing in assisted living. Um, so if you are an assisted living resident or even skilled nursing and you're uh, finding that getting memos and so forth via electronic mail, email is adequate, you can just let the staff know that you don't need paper copies of things. And uh, you know we can, we can save on some of the paper that's going out. Um, so in my memo yesterday, if you didn't have a chance to see it yet, I did announce that at this point in time, knock on wood, uh, we have no COVID cases on campus. We have no symptomatic people being staff or residents. Uh, we have no one at the hospital with COVID. So, um, you know, certainly over the last month since Christmas, we saw quite a spike in cases, uh, certainly as high a number of cases as we have had during uh, this entire pandemic, uh, but we are zeros across the board and have been for several days now. So we're quite excited about that. Um, you know, we attribute that to safe behaviors. We attribute that to booster shots. Uh, we attribute that to the fact that the Omicron variant seems to be less, uh, less uh, severe. Um, so, you know, people aren't becoming symptomatic and so forth. So uh, whatever the case may be, uh, we're not, you know, putting caution to the side by any means, but certainly we're happy with where we are right now. Um, also in yesterday's memo, you will have seen that at this point, basically all activities have resumed in the community building and in the health center. Uh, we are back to having all of the dining rooms open for seated service. Uh, we are continuing to offer uh, pickup uh, for meals for uh, independent living residents and delivery and the delivery charge has been reinstituted. That's something that precedes COVID uh, that has resumed. And you know this had been the case in the fall as well. So we're sort of back to standard dining there. Uh, we are working diligently to activate or implement a number of the items that we have identified as a result of the dining survey. So, um, you know, a lot of the issues that were identified in the survey actually impact the whole community. So I, I know there's been some questions about, you know, doing an, an assisted living specific survey or, uh, you know, a, a garden view specific survey or skilled nursing specific survey. But one of the things that I, I don't do a great job explaining, so I'll take a moment to do so is that all of the food uh, throughout the community and all of the culinary programming starts in the same place. So when we identify systemic um, changes that need to be made, they all will stem from the culinary team in the main kitchen. It's one general manager, it's one executive chef, um, it's a couple of the same chef managers and so forth. So uh, we don't really have, you know, siloed culinary programming. Everything kind of starts in the same place. And if our, if our basic framework uh, is not meeting the needs of the residents, then we know we have to start there. And it's after we sort of get some of these very, very basic changes made that we will be able to assess what we need to tweak in individual settings. So we will do it, you know, eventually individual uh, setting specific surveys. So specific to independent living dining room, specific to the pub, specific to the assisted living dining room and so forth. Um, but the, this, this survey was really to kind of get down to brass tacks and say, you know, are the menu offerings, you know, what they need to be? Because all of that starts in the kitchen. So what we're offering for the whole community on a particular day starts with the meals that we're putting together um, sort of for the most independent. And then we have to modify the, the diets as we go. Um, we have 
actually started implementing a new system for uh, modified consistency diets for the health center residents that need them. So when you have a pureed carrot, it should really start to look like a carrot now, and that's exciting. Um, we've worked with Sodexo to find a whole bunch of new products and, and um, uh, pieces of equipment that can help us do that. So we're very excited about that. Uh, as, as you know, we're, we're hiring up, we're doing, you know, menu changes and, and a wide variety of things. So lots of exciting stuff happening with the culinary program. Uh, lots of exciting stuff happening with the calendar. So when you see your February calendars, you're going to start to see, <clears throat> you know, lots of activities on these calendars. And I did have a memo last week that I just wanted to touch on and regardless of anything that you may have been told or anything that you think that you know to be the case, if you live on this campus, you are welcome to participate in any activity on this campus as long as you can safely do so without assistance. It does not matter where you sleep. It does not matter where you call home on campus. But if you see an activity or an event or a card game or a new instrument that's being taught, and you happen to sleep in skilled nursing or you happen to sleep in assisted living and you know or you are confident that you can participate in that activity in the community building by doing so independently, you are welcome to do so and I hope that you are and vice versa. Um, there's a lot of great programming that goes on in the great room if you live in independent living and you wanna participate in anything that's going on in the great room, for example, you are welcome to do so as well. So where you sleep should not be dictating, you know, what you participate in here on campus. I, I really want to keep reiterating that. You're going to hear me say that throughout 2022. This is one campus. And as long as we aren't on any kind of restrictions in any part of campus, everyone should be able to go and participate in everything that you'd like to. And we're really going to try to encourage that. That's what one community means. That's what this community is about. So you will be hearing that from me, you know, repeatedly during 2022. Um, let's see, Jason did ask me to mention that tomorrow um, we have to have everyone back from shopping by 1.30. So if you are going tomorrow and you're going out, everyone will need to be back here on campus by 1.30. So please make your plans accordingly. And the other thing that Jason has asked about that is he really needs people to be signing up for shopping. Um, all of our trips at this point have to have signups. Um, it's so that we can make sure that we're properly staffed, adequately spaced, and all of those things. So if you are planning to go shopping, you really do need to be signing up with concierge. So we're going to ask you to please do that. And, uh, and uh, just if you have any questions about that, you can definitely see Jason. Um, the next thing with, that was in my memo from yesterday, or sort of the, the, the main thing on the back page or second page, was that a few weeks ago, Governor Hochul had announced a um, health care worker booster mandate, which came with no details. <coughs> Excuse me. So for a couple of weeks, we've been waiting for the governor or the Department of Health to issue clarification on what that booster mandate means. And on Friday, this past Friday, she did so, or the Department of Health did so, and essentially stated that the a booster, as recommended by the CDC, is now required for all healthcare workers for which the original vaccine mandate was uh, applicable, which here on campus is all of our staff. Um, and essentially that the booster mandate will just follow the vaccine mandate um, in its entirety. So they did provide some guidance as to deadlines and so forth. Um, we do anticipate that we will have staff that will choose to leave Woodland Pond and leave the health healthcare industry over this booster mandate. There's no doubt. Um, we were very fortunate in that we only lost four employees with the vaccine mandate. We were uh, actually probably the luckiest out of uh, any healthcare facility. Most places lost between 10 and 20% of their staff. We only lost four out of 260. Uh, this time around, I think we will lose more. Uh, folks are, if they have wanted to be boosted at this point, they have been. The boosters have been around for many months and are easily accessible. And I would anticipate that we will lose staff over the booster mandate. Um, we won't know that though until the weeks to come uh, because the mandate goes into effect initially on, on February 21st and then sort of rolls along based on the CDC guidance for 
periods of the next four months or so. Um, so we will keep folks posted, but uh, you know we, we know that we have staff that are reticent to have the booster. And I think everybody's just sort of exhausted of this whole thing um, in every way. And you know there are people that just you know didn't have a great experience with the vaccine, maybe for example, or they've had COVID and they feel that they've got that immunity. Um, are not, you know, really interested in having the booster. And that will obviously be their choice and we will support them in that. And, um, you know, we, we're dealing with a situation where the government is making the rule and we have to comply. And we will make, you know, those boosters available to, to those folks that will remain in our employment, you know, and we will keep an eye on, you know, new directives that come out. So, you know, that's the best information that we have at this point. We don't have any sort of quantification of, you know, who would plan to stay and who would plan to go. Um, but again, that mandate will be effective for all staff. And that uh, begins becoming effective uh, uh, February 21st. So we will keep all of you posted on that as we go through. Um, we are potentially expecting a little bit of inclement weather possibly this weekend. And I always like to take the opportunity to remind everyone of a few things whenever we're expecting potentially inclement weather. Um, first and foremost, when it comes to snow, um, Woodland Pond is responsible for snow removal and we use a contractor to do so. They are responsible for clearing between vehicles and clearing vehicles off, but they do not do so until a storm has completely finished. And it takes time um, because to clean out in between hundreds of cars and doing it by hand, using you know, small and careful equipment, uh, some sand, some salt, you know, these things take time. So more than anything else, please remember that we live in, in the Northeast, we live in, in New York, and winter means it can be slippery. So when you go outside and it has been a storm and, and there's still evidence of the storm on the sidewalks and on the parking lots and so forth, you know, consider whether you actually need to go out and get in your car uh, or go out and go for a walk if you're unsure of your footing at all. And um, always wear flat or, or sensible shoes with, uh, you know, nice grippy bottoms, um, you know, nothing slick, nothing, you know, snazzy. That's not the time to be wearing those kinds of shoes uh, when you're going outside. You need to just wear footwear that can protect you from slipping and falling. And also, of course, wear your purse pendants. Uh, they do work in most of our parking lots. So if, you know, you did happen to hit, you know, a part that, you know, hadn't yet been cleared or, you know, had a melt off and then refroze and you maybe didn't see it and had a slip, then, you know, having your purse pendant or having your cell phone on you is going to be the best way for us to find you if you have fallen, um, let's say in between a car. That's the worst case scenario, but it, it's realistic that it could happen. So if we think about, you know, what could realistically happen and how can we protect ourselves, we can protect ourselves by wearing the right shoes, not going out if we don't have to, and having our purse or a cell phone on us. If the purse is too far away and doesn't work, then you try the, um, the cell phone and go from there. So just, just things to think about, you know, so that we can help you if you need help in that situation. Um, the other thing is, is that the health center is on emergency power. Uh, the independent living wings have some lighting. The apartments and cottages do not have electric in the event of an emergency. Um, they are residential construction. So everyone should be always prepared with uh, battery powered lighting, um, sources of warmth and, and not candles. Um, so, you know, you would wanna have blankets and know where they are and so forth. You should always be making sure that your cell phones are charged uh, in the event of a potential power outage. And um, the uh, plant, physical plant committee had identified a nice little nifty plug-in tool I'll show you. that actually acts, so it acts as a nightlight. Uh, when you plug it in, it looks like this. And then it actually is also a flashlight. So you can see the flashlight goes on. So it acts as a nightlight when it's plugged in and then it acts or can act as a nightlight and then it plugs in and it's just handy right there for you. So these are really nice to, to get if you don't have one. And I think that the concierge has information on how to order these if you'd like one. And also, um, 
Dedrick's does have lanterns. So, you know, the LED lanterns and they're very inexpensive. So if you haven't been in Dedrick's in a while and, and don't remember kind of what they carry in there, they've got really handy stuff. They've got great things in there and, uh, you know, things that can save your life if you need, you know, lighting. Um, the last point on that is uh, if you do need assistance, either ascending or descending a set of stairs and you live in um, independent living, you should be contacting concierge and let them know that you would need help in the event of an emergency so that we can let first responders know that. And also, um, if you rely on uh, electricity for life-saving reasons and you live in independent living, please also let concierge know that as well. So these would be, be folks that rely on oxygen concentrators, a CPAP machine, a BiPAP machine, those kinds of things. Um, so then this way, if there is an event of an emergency, we know where to deploy the resources um, as quickly as possible. The last thing I'm just going to mention is that um, we, our interdisciplinary team met this morning. So that's uh, nursing staff, uh, residential services staff, rehab staff, myself, a whole bunch of people. We meet every Tuesday at 11 to sort of talk about evolving needs of, of different residents. But we had a larger conversation this morning about um, our outpatient physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy department. And uh, we have identified that there are a number of people in primarily independent living, assisted living, and garden view that could really benefit from a tune-up uh, with the outpatient uh, therapy department. So um, we are going to be compiling a list of folks that have either had a recent fall, um, changes in their ability to ambulate or transfer, which is to kind of get up and get around, uh, people that have had a, a new health diagnosis, anything that can sort of help to make you a little bit more comfortable in your day-to-day, -day, make getting around and doing things more easy, especially within your home, things like getting on, you know, um, compression stockings, uh, things like, you know, reaching for things that might be on a higher shelf, bending over, all of these things that sort of, you know, change as we age, our rehab team is amazing and can help with all of that, as well as cognition, um, cognitive therapy through the speech language pathology program. So this is a benefit that's available to any Medicare recipient um, on an annual basis. And we offer the services right here on campus. So why not access them? You know, if it can help you feel better, you know, feel more balanced, um, feel stronger, feel less concerned about a fall, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, those kinds of things. So we're going to work with you on that. And if you have any interest in pursuing that yourself, you can reach out to either Sarah, uh, Sarah Leonard, uh, Mary Jo Murray, or Angel Murphy. Uh, those three are the, the ones that would be the best for that. And uh, we can get you a, uh, help you get a prescription from your doctor for any of those services. And then we can get you going right there in our, out, in our outpatient gym. So lots of good stuff going on. And uh, I think that's all I wanted to cover for today. You know where to find me. I'll be here all week. If I don't talk to you, I will see you on WPTV next week at 12 o'clock on Tuesday. Thank you.